I started at RCA in uh, March of 1958. I'd spent the previous year uh, testing large liquid propellant rocket engines out in the Santa Susana Mountains in uh, California. And uh, I uh, moved back to New Jersey and uh, started at RCA March of 58. And I spent about 35 years there, all in Camden. And uh, worked with the uh, digital airborne digital uh, equipment design group. And uh, I, I was basically a mechanical engineer. Uh, although I did go to graduate school at night and I got two additional degrees, uh, master's degrees, one in electrical engineering and one in aeronautical engineering. Um, I retired in 94 and uh, continued to do all the things I like to do, remodeling around the house, building the train displays, and taking great trips with my wife great. various places in the world. So what was the first project you worked on at RCA? It was a, a, a digital uh, communication system for the uh, 100 series fighter planes, uh, which would uh, provide direction to a target uh, from the uh, ground controller. Mm -hmm. And I did the mechanical design. Back then we used uh, small um, little packets of circuits which would hold two transistors and uh, you know, now you can put thousands of those on a, on a chip, of course. Right, right. And uh, we work, worked on that. And yeah. I did some of the system work on that, uh, developing the test messages okay. for the equipment. When, when you uh, got your first assignment, did they give you any sort of a mentor or anybody to, uh, to oversee what you were doing? Uh, not really. Uh, being a mechanical engineer in a, in a group of uh, electrical engineers is a, is a unique experience. Uh, you run into three different kinds of people. You run into electrical engineers that uh, don't know anything about mechanical engineering. You run into some that, that know a lot about mechanical engineering and you run into some that think they know a lot about mechanical engineering. So once you get to work, learn to work with these folks, uh, it all works out very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we accomplish the purpose of the projects. Mm -hmm. um, Are there any particular instances you remember about these uh, engineers dealing with, uh, with the new guy on the block? Well, every, everybody was always very cooperative. Being at RCA was like a family. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's always somebody you could go to and ask him about something or, hey, I heard uh, so-and-so work on something like that, and you go give him a call. And uh, that's the way he got information got passed around informally mm -hmm. uh, for information that you might need to develop the product that you were working on. So everybody was very cooperative and, and okay. Uh, friendly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so after that project, where did you go? Ooh, uh, I went to uh, work with uh, the ATL people on classified projects for s several years mm -hmm. and uh, they, that all turned out good so mm -hmm. that's all we talk about that's it that's all we that. say about it right uh, uh, then the most exciting part was the uh, stuff we did for the uh, space program mm -hmm. and we had a little group together uh, that uh, developed a communication system for the lunar rover we had an electronics package uh, we had to provide for that the antenna the camera and uh, we could we could do uh, voice data and uh, video uh, from the buggy back down to the earth, and uh, that worked out well. Of course, uh, Hy uh, Princeton built the camera for us, mm -hmm. right? And Morristown did the f final detail design on the antenna. Although we came up with the concepts, and then we uh, at Camden we developed the uh, basic mechanical package which contained all the electronics and the thermal control mm -hmm. systems on that. But it was really great to work on a project and then uh, go home someday and turn on your television and say, hey, there's a, something that I just designed, or I designed that two months ago. Yeah. Very, very rewarding experience. And plus we can talk about it. Yeah. I, I imagine the uh, environmental requirements were a lot more stringent than the other projects. Well, yeah. Uh, standard space uh, requirements so you know we were working in a vacuum and uh, NASA was very cautious uh, about what they required us to uh, be able to perform in and uh, we designed we're used to designing equipment to uh, harsh environments and some of the things had to be extended 
and it worked well. We even uh, took one of our uh, test chambers down in the uh, environmental test lab in Camden and uh, filled the whole floor in with uh, some custom-made sand that NASA had specified for us. And then we could put our equipment in there and start pouring pieces, bits of the sand over the intricate mechanisms of the antenna and everything else to make sure this stuff could work on the, uh, the dusty moon surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, but they were, they were th very thorough in what they wanted and uh, we certainly uh, followed through on it. Okay, when you were working, I imagine, in a pretty close-knit team at that point, Yes, uh, we had uh, an engineering uh, leader. It was uh, Mr. Jack Conley, and uh, and we, I had the mechanical engineer working with me, and then we had the guys from uh, ATL help us with the uh, thermal design because they had some computer programs that could do some of that kind of analysis, and uh, it worked well. And uh, of course, everybody got active participation. The program manager wanted all the engineers who were doing anything to stand up and present their story directly to the customer. And uh, so that really motivated people uh, to uh, to do their job and to do it well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, we appreciated that. Did you ever have to uh, go down to um, any of the places where they were? Yeah, we went to a regular, on a regular basis down to Houston for regular uh, reviews where we did presentations and explained the status of the job and uh, showed them lots of view graphs. We had, I had a good artist in RCA that did a lot of good illustrations of different uh, movements and things like that by the astronauts to handle the equipment. And that was Jim Burns and uh, that turned out well because that helped communicate what the equipment was mm -hmm. and of course we had a <clears throat> major review down at the uh, in Florida with the uh, which the actual crew to make sure that they could uh, handle everything mount it dismount it and uh, operate doors and antennas and things like that and we worked uh, directly with them mm -hmm. the two guy guy astronauts in that were uh, Jim Irwin and uh, uh, David Scott David Scott was the command pilot for Apollo 15. And what was that like? Well, uh, NASA is very thorough. They had a very good quality control system. You take any piece of equipment into a, uh, into a facility or a building, whether you were delivering it or not, made no difference. It went in there, it got registered, it got put on the table, and uh, the, the quality people inspected it, gave you a report. and. Uh, whether you were just uh, bringing it down for uh, an in-process show or not, it didn't make any difference. Anything that walked in that facility got inspected. And uh, I think that works out in the long run to the benefit of everybody and the success of the program. What was the perception of RCA by these uh, external people? Uh, always got uh, very good feelings from the NASA people. Uh, and uh, they, they had a lot of respect for uh, our, our program manager and, uh, and uh, Sam Holt was uh, the business area manager for that part of the business and uh, he had uh, had a lot of previous experience with NASA. So uh, it was a good solid relationship mm -hmm. and uh, there was never any conflicts or problems. Mm -hmm. um, um. Were you involved at all with the Apollo 13 issue? Oh, yeah, I, I can tell you an interesting story about that. Uh, actually, not the equipment itself or the event, but it just so happened that uh, when Apollo 13 was in the accident mode and they were trying to return to the Earth, uh, we were having a, a meeting with our NASA people with regard to what we were going to do on Apollo 15 for the lunar rover. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember uh, our meeting was interrupted and the, the NASA engineers said, come on down the hall and into the recording room and uh, you can listen to the, the uh, Houston talking to the two astronauts that are uh, on their way back to the, uh, to the Earth, right? 
and everybody's uh, praying that they they make it, which they did, of course. So that was that was very exciting, and it uh, you know it sends the chills up your back when you listen to these guys talking uh, at this uh, very sensitive uh, time in the history of the flight. Uh, of course, the other thing was our. Our boss was very demanding, and we had to work late that night, uh, and we missed the big celebration party at the hotel uh, for the safe, safe landing of the uh, of the astronauts. And we, by the time we got back to the hotel, all this uh, broken glasses and uh, and paper cups laying around, and it was very quiet. We <laughs> we missed the best party of the year, I think, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we did our job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh the reputation that we have uncovered so far is that uh, the RCA people, they worked really hard, and they also played pretty hard. Did you have any anything to say about that? Not really. We were always busy working, uh, mm -hmm. and because we had a very short schedule. In fact, I think that maybe initially that NASA wasn't quite sure they'd be able to get that system together mm -hmm. to be able to fly it on uh, uh, Apollo 15. Maybe just later, because they only had two more, three flights, 15, 16, and 17 left. Right. And uh, But we, we got it done to their schedule, and it worked, and it worked fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we were very proud of that fact. And uh, yeah. I was fortunate, uh, my supervisor put me in for an award, the Engineer of the Month uh, award. I received that, so I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Uh, so what were your coworkers like? Co-workers were fine. They were just ordinary, good-natured folks uh, doing their job. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one guy, one guy, I remember one program manager said one time, you know, he said, the engineers are too honest. Well, they are. They are are honest, and uh, that's what makes them good engineers. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's never any uh, problems associated with uh, that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. How did you feel about your career, about whether RCA appreciated you, uh, your progression? Well, uh, we, all, we had reviews, and uh, when I got into the, uh, later on into the uh, program where we were developing the satellite terminals, the ground stations for the Army, um, I didn't like some of the mechanical things that they were doing, and I got to be a complainer. And uh, my boss, Bob Lawton, I think he was tired of hearing that, and uh, so he decided, okay, you be the mechanical leader. And because they really didn't have a mechanical leader. And uh, so I said, okay, I'll do that job. So uh, I appreciated that, and, uh, and I was uh, supported by the management of what we were trying to do. And, uh, accomplish things. Um, okay. Um, we've also, there's also been some reference to uh, people's opinions that uh, RCA actually changed South Jersey. Do you have any opinions on that? Uh, not really. I know when I initially started there in Camden, there was something like 6,000 employees because they were still doing some uh, commercial television manufacturing and the studio equipment development mm -hmm. at that time in the 10 and 13 building. Uh, but there was, it was about six, over 6,000 employees. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a lot of people coming in and uh, uh, availing themselves to the service of the city as required. Yes. Yeah. So... What about the neighborhood? Were there other RCA people living? Where I live throughout South Jersey, there's a, you could always find a couple other RCA people uh, uh, in the neighborhood. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. So as far as the environment of the workplace, was it a drudge? Was it something that you got up in the morning and, and looked forward to? Uh, no, I always felt happy to go to work in the morning, and uh, I had a great carpool situation for about 15 years. Uh, I rode, uh, rode to work with uh, John Pope, and uh, he and I both liked to get in there early, and we both left at a reasonable time after 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, he he en he enjoyed uh, his work tremendously because he had to coordinate between manufacturing and engineering, and get everybody to like him and to like each other. So uh, I got to go to work every morning with a with a diplomat, and uh, he would discuss his jobs and all that, and uh, he was filled with enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, so a lot of that rubbed off on me, mm. and uh, because he had this big smile when he got to the door and parked the car, and said, "Let's go in here and get him, Bob," and uh, and that's what we did. And uh, it was a pleasure working with John. Good. You uh, you mentioned that you <clears throat> got some other um, degrees. Um, was RCA influential in that? Uh, I know I was just interested in broadening my uh, capability, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I took advantage of the uh, of the program. Uh, they paid for the tuition. Mm -hmm. You went at night, and that was that was it. And mm -hmm. I did, did some uh, had a better understanding of what the electrical people were doing mm -hmm. uh, as a result of some of the educational uh, experiences. Okay. Yeah. Good. So. What was the best thing about working for RCA? The best thing working for RCA was the fact that I met my beautiful wife of 54 years uh, at RCA. I was a, um, a widower mm -hmm. with two small children, and uh, it turned out that uh, she, she was a good friend of a fellow that was uh, uh, one of my fraternity brothers when I was in college, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to me. and. Uh, so uh, she's sitting there in the next room, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, she sees the greatest thing from RCA. So she was working there also. Yeah, she worked in the uh, uh, visitor security, and she worked with the uh, personnel mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, we hear a lot of reference about the RCA family. What's that mean to you? Well, it's, it's the way people work with each other. It's not a, uh, a demographic per se. It's uh, it's how they cooperate with each other, how they treat each other, how they share information with each other as required. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you always felt that you could find somebody that had done something similar uh, that would uh, talk to you. And if it got to be too big a deal, they'd ask to charge your shop order for the, for the time. But uh, it was a very cooperative environment. Good. If I had to ask you about the worst thing about working for RCA, what would that be? Oh boy, gee, I guess uh, getting caught in the floods on Admiral Wilson Boulevard <laughs> in, in the spring when the heavy rains came. And uh, it, uh, you're always worried whether your, your engine exhaust is going to get under the water when you're trying to get out onto Admiral Wilson uh, to get home. And, uh, and the parking lot was... Uh, was there, but it was kind of messy. So, uh, but that's uh, that, not the RCA itself. Uh, that's that's yeah. the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, how would you sum up your career at RCA? I felt fulfilled, and uh, I'll I'll point out why. Um, I was a great science fiction reader back in the '40s. My father was too, and he encouraged me and. Uh, scientific things, and uh, he uh, also was interested in science fiction, and he wrote a, read a lot of science fiction. And I look back uh, with the work that I did uh, on the Moon Project for the Lunar Rover, that was science fiction back in the 40s. And it's amazing, I can look over my career and say, gee, I went from science fiction to science reality. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a very warm feeling, uh, yeah. at, uh, yeah. uh, a sense of accomplishment. Are there any other stories or anything you can recall about either your work or the people or incidents that happened? Well, there was always this, the standard uh, jokes or uh, the, the elevators were always breaking down because the buildings were old. They were built in 1921, a 10 and 13 building. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was always a, a good conversation piece, if you would, like if you get in the elevator in the morning, everybody would smile and say, "Well, I wonder if we're going to get up there today, right?" And uh, but uh, we had a, a good crew of uh, elevator repairmen, which uh, kept those things going, mm -hmm. and uh, that that sort of thing was uh, 
was a prominent 